Hello? Can you hear me? Welcome to the Missouri River. My name is Steve Snell and welcome to Adventure Art on the Mighty Mo, a painting show about paddling the entire Missouri River. Over the course of three months, I will paddle over 2,300 miles. I will live in a tent. I will look for adventure. I will paint a lot of paintings. This is Adventure Art on the Mighty Mo. The adventure begins on June 2nd at the headwaters of the Missouri River in Three Forks, Montana. This is the confluence of the Jefferson, Madison, and Gallatin Rivers and where the Missouri officially starts. From here I will paddle over 2,300 miles through seven states, across nine lakes, and around 15 dams to the confluence of the Mississippi River in St. Louis, Missouri. The Missouri is the longest river in North America. It is both wild and heavily managed by the Army Corps of Engineers for navigation, recreation, hydroelectricity, and flood control purposes. There is no simple description for this river as it changes significantly as it makes its way across the middle half of the United States. It is not the most popular river to paddle, but that is part of the appeal. One can pretty much have it to themselves for days at a time and achieve a feeling of being truly alone. It is full of history and there are plenty of unknowns. It is well suited for adventure and art making. It will not be easy, but I'm pretty sure I can do it. I don't know. Yeah, it's on. All right. Bye bye, Dada. We love you. You can do it. Love you guys too. <laughs> Oops, wrong way. Bye, Ozzy. Bye. Bye. Love you. Love you too. All right. I think it's working. I'll see you in St. Louis. Or Kansas City. As I set off from the boat ramp in Three Forks, Montana, I try not to think too much about the distance and time it will take to get home, which is about three months. I am not an expert paddler, but I do take precautions, prepare ahead of time, and know what I am doing to some degree. I have spent the past several months dehydrating food, gathering supplies, and figuring out a plan. While true adventure always contains an unknown element of risk and potential failure, I am determined to complete this journey safely and successfully. My background is in art. I have been undertaking adventures in search of it for over a decade now, and my first boat was that of a couch. I also have a cardboard replica of Lewis and Clark's keel boat and dream one day about floating a giant pretzel across the state of Missouri. As many artists have and do, I look to the river for creative inspiration. While this is my most ambitious adventure yet, I figure I will learn a lot about paddling as I go, and there is plenty of time and miles ahead to get to know my boat. My boat is a 16 and a half foot solo canoe with a custom cover and foot controlled rudder system. I recently purchased it off of the Craigslist classifieds and had just enough time to test it out once on the river before heading up north to Montana. It is a great boat. I am able to carry up to a week's worth of water, a month's supply of food, and 60 sheets of watercolor paper at any one time. I'm now just about an hour into this voyage. A voyage that could very well take me over three months. And I think I just need to like refocus my mind that this is now my reality. I hope this is really what I want. I think that's the main thought that's going through my head right now. 
because I'm stuck with it. <laughs> There's really no turning back now without a lot of pain in the ass for a lot of people. And I don't want to put anybody in that situation. But so far, so good. I feel so fortunate, so lucky to be right here, right now. The river in this section is quick, shallow, and lined with hills of sage and exposed rock. As someone from Kansas City, a part of the country with less obviously striking features, everything seems epic and worth a photo. There are gravel bars and a lot of shorebirds, especially pelicans. I also see a moose, but I didn't get the camera out in time to prove it. Within a day's paddle, I reach the very first dam. It is a short portage from here to the downstream campground where I meet a man named Jack, or Pot Roast Jack as he is known by some. Together we eat pot roast, drink cold beer, and talk about the river. It is a wonderful first day. The next morning I wake up early and paint my first picture of the mighty Mo. I take my time and enjoy the kind weather. All right, so it is day two, about 11 in the morning. I just left the Tostin Dam, down dam, kind of portage ramp. And I'm coming up here on some rapids, which I wasn't expecting. So I probably shouldn't talk too much and really focus on I continue paddling through this uppermost section, and by the end of day two, reach the first sizable body of water on my journey. Canyon Ferry Lake lies near Helena, Montana, and is roughly 25 miles long. The wind can whip up sizable waves here, and with a thunderstorm approaching, I paddle quickly to make camp. I have just enough time to set up my tent before the storm hits. After it passes, I make another painting, eat dinner, enjoy some chocolates, and go to bed. I guess one thing I realized, you know, paddling the lake, which is quite a bit more difficult than paddling on the river, but right now this is about as easy as it gets. There's hardly any waves except for the wake created by boats. Hardly any wind. And that just kind of makes me realize when I hit the big lakes, <laughs> it's gonna be really hard. But I'll get there when I get there. Looks like rain ahead. My goal today is to get to... Uh... As I paddle across Canyon Ferry Lake, I begin to find a new routine. I keep to the western shoreline and take in the geological changes and strange seeming rocks. The cliff swallows keep me company and fish play in the shallows. It is about 15 miles to a floater's camp called Mahogany Cove, where I will stay the night. I make it there just before another storm hits. I have the camp to myself, and it is the perfect place to paint. So here's my painting spot. Not bad, huh? And there's my camping spot down there. And I'm the only one around that I'm aware of. This is a boater's camp, so you can't drive or pack in. You gotta float in. And so I walked up here to this little outlook here. And it's just amazing. There's Mahogany Cove. 
There's Canyon Ferry Lake. This is beautiful. I feel so lucky. What can I tell you? Portaging or portaging, depending on how you call it, is basically when you're taking a canoe or a boat around a dam or an impassable area. There are 13, I believe, of these dams that I will eventually need to portage, or portage as I call it, on my journey. The next one is actually tomorrow and I will be getting a ride by a man named Well, it's in my phone. He's a very nice man, and he's gonna come out and meet me tomorrow morning, and we're gonna paddle together a little bit, and then he's gonna give me a ride around the dam. Sorry, I just need to get this color in real quick. And I don't even know what's next. I feel like this is just really the beginning of, of meeting a lot of people, a lot of good people, and hopefully no bad people talk about what I'm scared of people I'd say yeah there's bears out there and rattlesnakes and ticks well I am probably most scared of ticks but after that I'd say it's just people um, messing with you you know so I'll plan to um, kind of keep a low profile it's hard to make a good painting and also have a good story. Might not be able to have it both ways after all. Let me just get this line down real quick. How does Bob Ross do it? I'll tell you how he does it. He paints each painting three times. Once before the camera's on, another one while the camera's rolling, and then a third one which is like the ending painting or like the best one. At least that's what I read. I don't have time to do that. I can't guarantee that every painting I make on this show is gonna be good. The reality is, everybody doesn't make great work all the time. But sometimes you do. And so that's my strategy here. If I paint enough, surely I'm eventually gonna make a good one. So hang in there, keep watching, and I'll tell you some more stories. Final thoughts of episode one. I probably have some work to do on my storytelling. I'll probably have better stories for you by the next time I film. What I can say, my thoughts here are that I'm excited, morale is still high. I'm nervous that this is gonna be way harder than I could have even thought it was gonna be. I miss my kid, and I miss my wife, and I love them both very much. But I'm also ready for this unknown, and I'm gonna get home to them, and I'm gonna come back. With a lot of paintings. <laughs>